Hello and welcome to race 5 of the GTTCC brought to you by MRC over on Facebook. Uh, so this is race 5, first round uh, of this week. Uh, qualified third, um, had a good lap time in the Ferrari, um, hoping for a good start. Uh, it looks like everybody's saving their stronger TTs for race 6, which will be on the channel soon. So uh, on the start, putting on the traction control to one, and then I thought, nah, super soft tyre, so let's just go with it. And I actually had a half decent start. Um, a lot better start than we had last week in the Ferrari. And we're managing to stay up uh, here with Rusty and White Shark. Getting a little bit taps on Rick, looking for the inside line into the chicane down here. But then it gets cut off by Rusty, so we're going to tuck back in and just try and take it a little bit cautious, see what's happening. Rusty goes a little bit deeper there, so we're aiming for the cut back onto the main strain here, straight here. But unfortunately, I had to hesitate on the throttle just because Rusty's car was in the way, and that allowed him the opportunity to get away. So, uh, looking at the two ahead, um, I want to try and get ahead, uh, or at least try and stop them from getting away. Rusty brakes on the inside, but quite a lot earlier, and I actually go a bit too deep there. And uh, Rick in the F-type, up the inside as White Shark makes a small mistake. Luckily, um, Rick didn't get a very good exit there. So the front two are really fighting here. They're going side by side through this fast right left. And it looks like White Shark just allowed and manages to stay on it, but does run a bit wide. And now I'm on the preferred line. Rusty uh, breaks later than I do. In fact, they both break too late and run right wide. And now we're three wide three wide going through this double right, uh, well, triple right hander. Uh, White Shark actually loses out there. I think he went the widest out of a lot of us. Uh, now in the slipstream of Rusty, looking down into the braking zone and they decide to go for it. I break a little bit later and I go all the way deep down in there. Left him enough space, but it looked like he went in a bit too deep himself. There was a bit of a bump by the sounds of it behind us. Um, and that's up to first. Now you see I go all the way to the left here because I looked behind and saw Rusty and I thought I'd rather help third place than help second place. If I can get third place to start taking uh, time off second place, that's going to help me. So an instant replay here. Here we can see in the triple right hand, we're three wide all the way through here. Um, White Shark is the one that loses out the most as he's on the furthest uh, on the th furthest out line. So now here we're flashing our lights just behind Rusty. As we go down into the double hairpin at the end of the track here, down the inside, you can see that I left enough space for Rusty, uh, but it looks like he went a little bit too deep and then loses a little bit on the um, exit of the corner there and has a bump. And then you can see here, basically what I'm trying to do is get the slipstream to Rick rather than Rusty because Rick is further away from me. Okay, and then we'll meet back up with the action. So now uh, that's phase one of my job done, we need to try and get the hammer down and try and make a gap to the guys behind. So yeah, it's all about we'll just get the pedal to the metal and try and open up that gap as much as possible. We've got to try and do good, consistent, clean laps and see if we can get a nice gap uh, that either we can rely on later in the race or that it means that we can take it a little bit easier later in the race. So revving the car all the way out and then hard on the brakes down to the hairpin here. We can see on the radar somebody did come quite close, it looks like it's Rick, but uh, we managed to get out without any competition so it looks like we're starting to break that toe. So now we're going to have some highlights from further back in the race. Um, so we're going to be dotting all over the uh, place here. So here we're on board with Big Wall as Angus in the TT takes a dive down into the first hairpin on the track and it actually manages to complete the pass. So Angus taking the TT, I think he's the only TT driver in race five. Um, here we've got further back, we've got Ace McLeod and um, Budsy Boy um, going side by side into that uh, fast fast left hand corner and it looks like Ace McLeod had the back out of it and it actually means that Gold 45 manages to get back past him so there he went for the move and then ended up losing a place rather than getting a place we'll go back up through the field and you can see uh, Big Wall still fighting with, uh, with Angus in the TT there as we look just behind we've got Rick up in second and Rusty in third Rusty looking to the outside there maybe can get a better exit than the F-Type Looks like initial exit is a lot better than the F-Type and he's alongside 
does the Corvette have the grunt down the, uh, down the start finish straight? Rick might be getting a slight distance tow, but it looks like the Corvette just doesn't have quite the power to go past him there. He has to slot back in just behind. Tries to take a tighter line. Yes, he's on the inside for the uh, start of this chicane here, but not like, quite late enough on the brakes and has to concede the corner. White Shark down in fourth, Angus in fifth, and then we've got Molly and uh, Big Wall in sixth and seventh. Big Wall looking to try and go around the outside of the McLaren doesn't quite pull it off unfortunately he looks like he got on that curb a little bit too much and that unsettled the car and meant he lost a bit of momentum can he use a slipstream though going down into the hairpin he's thoroughly in that and Molly goes defensive a puff of smoke there as he's breaking very hard there but both managed to get to the apex and unfortunately there's no way through there for big wall in his Cayman he'll have to follow Molly through these fast corners I would have thought until the breaking point just here but it's such a short breaking point really need to be right alongside each other although he does get a better exit but Molly manages to cut him off let's look in ahead uh, and again it looks like Rusty's not getting any competition from behind so he's probably looking ahead to my car in first and not wanting it to get away and Rick too doesn't want to get away but he doesn't want to let Rusty back through Rusty can really focus on uh, Rick though now because he's got a nice gap, a nice cushion behind him. So he goes a tighter line into this uh, double hairpin and actually gets on the power a lot earlier than Rick. Rick takes a wider line there and was very late on the power and it looks like Rusty's completed that move. Rusty's now up into second, although the F-Type has got the slipstream. Can it fight back down here? And it looks like he has to concede the place to Rusty. Cause uh, although there's a, a, a decent breaking point for the first corner, it's quite a fast corner, so you're going to have to be pretty ballsy to stick it in there. Now, White Shark was the pole sitter, has definitely got a lot of pace in this Lamborghini here, but he's stuck down in fourth and needs to find a way past Rick in the F type. Big Wall and um, uh, Moly still having a good fight, and it looks like um, but uh, Bubs, Bubsy Boy and Ace McLeod are pretty much knocking panels off each other as Big Wall goes down the inside of Molly into the first hairpin can he get the job done? He meets the apex, can he get on the power? Does he run a bit wide? He runs slightly wide as Ace McLeod finds his way past the LG Lamborghini just behind and it does look like Big Wall's got around Molly there so he manages to make that pass stick and then we've got 10th, we've got Brother, Nub, Brother Nubsy and then uh, 11th Gold 45 so having a quick look down the um, rankings, White Shark there trying to take third from Rick. He is on the inside of this triple right hand corner. Has he got the move done? It looks like it's alongside. It's going to be who's going to break latest down into the hairpin. We go on board with White Shark in the Lamborghini. Looks like he breaks a little bit later, but Rick keeps his nose in there and stops the Lamborghini from being able, being able to get turned in there. But the Lamborghini gets a good exit. Bit of a switch back, but just not quite good enough and it has to sit in behind the F-Type all the way down the main straight. Can he look for him into turn one? No, the, as I say, the breaking point just isn't quite long enough with a high-speed corner like that. But it looks like he's got the inside coming into the chicanes. Is he going to break later? Yes, slightly later than Rick and he's down the inside. Yeah, and it looks like he manages to hold it up and manages to come out the corner still ahead of Rick. So, it looks like here Angus taking a penalty, so maybe this is a bit further on in the race, he may have had a mistake, and it looks like he's had to serve the penalty on the start finish straight, which means that he's lost out to Big Wall in the Cayman, and it looks like Moldy's now looking at him in the McLaren. Can he get past? He really wants to take advantage of any mistakes here. Ace McLeod there screeching the tyres of the Evo just behind. Coming down into the ch chicane, looking to the inside there, hopping all over the kerb there. But it looks like Angus has started to get his composure back. And that TT, wow, look at that pull out those uh, slow corners there. Uh, TT definitely doing well here. Uh, but now Ace McLeod is all over Molly. He's in the slipstream of the Claren. He goes to the wide. Molly stays to the defensive. Breaks as late as possible. Can he go all the way around the outside? Oh, he just got on the power a little bit too early and then just started getting that chronic understeer that sometimes you can get in a four-wheel drive car. Looking back through the field, White Shark is now starting to line up Rusty in the Corvette. 
Um, my car is up ahead. I probably I think I've got about a four second lead at this point. Um, and just trying to keep my head down and put those laps in. White Shark gets a tight line out of that corner there. Good front end grip from the Lamborghini here. Um, his pole time was uh, a good chunk faster than most people. It looks like Rusty actually had to concede the corner early and actually got out the throttle early. Although he comes back a little bit and there's actually a nudge there. They actually touch and that's actually dropped them all back into the uh, grips of Rick in the F-Type. Although he doesn't bump into the back of um, Rusty and loses that time there. There I think Big Wall uh, serving a small penalty there and actually loses out the place uh, to Angus in the TT unfortunately. Further back for 8th and 9th, we've got Molly and Budsy Boy, um, Busby Boy even, in the um, the Lamborghini. Uh, Molly runs wide in the McLaren and Buzz, uh, Budsy Boy, uh, Busby Boy, sorry I'm going to murder this name every single part of the time, uh, manages to get down the inside into the chicane and tries to get better, the better exit and looks like he's got that job done. Can Molly use a slipstream and come down the inside into the hairpin? He's looking aggressive, but uh, Busby Boy's not defending it, although breaks very, very late. A little bit too late. Molly gets a better exit, maybe, but she doesn't get on the power early enough. You need to get on the power a little bit earlier there. I, I reckon if you had been on the power maybe a quarter second earlier, it might have been a better outcome coming out there. So it looks like somewhere White Shark has managed to get his uh, nose back past Rusty and is now up to second. Can Rusty now fight back and put him under a little bit of pressure? Uh, this, if he, if he can, this is when he needs to do it. He needs to do it as soon as possible. Coming down into the double hairpin, White Shark a lot later on the brakes. It looks like the Lamborghini does very well being late on the brakes into that corner there. And it looks like Rusty's going to struggle to keep up there. Looking back down through the field, uh, people kind of equal distance apart. Everybody's kind of spread out a little bit. Um, we need to wait to see if people will start closing up. Although Molly's got the slipstream of uh, Busby Boy, it's down the inside into turn one. See, you can make a pass into turn one, but you need to be right up in there. And it looks like he's successful in completing the pass. It doesn't look like Busby Boy is close enough for the comeback into the chicane. Can he start attacking? Uh, I believe that's uh, Ace McLeod just ahead in the Evo. Um, well, he needs to get his head down and do some good lap times because there's only about a second, second and a half gap there and um, it's quite a few straights in this track so if you can stick in the slipstream then you are going to gain some time. Looks like we're now back on board with Rusty and he does have a small penalty so it looks like he's very close to White Shark but he does have a small penalty so although he's managed to get close he may have cut a little bit of a corner and now he's going to have to on the start finish strike serve that penalty and that's probably going to drop him back and maybe back into the clutches of fourth place which I believe at the moment is Rick in the F type. Yeah, so we can just see Rick and Angus in the TT also pulling up um, the, on the back of this battle. So if they slow themselves down anymore, they're going to be in a, a, a four-way battle for second, third, fourth and fifth. Going into the final hairpin, uh, Rusty trying to serve a bit of the penalty there, but he needs to do it on the straight really. And there you go, he starts serving the penalty. And there you go, he served that penalty. But he's going to be vulnerable to Angus. And he's going to have good straight line speed in this TT. And it looks like, yeah, Angus is going to complete the pass. Can he now apply pressure to Rick in third? Can Rick stay with White Shark? Or is White Shark going to use this opportunity to now start putting away and hunt myself down in the Ferrari? Going down into this lovely chicane. I tell you what, this chicane does wonders for setting up overtaken opportunities just because there's so many different lines you can take a slow line for the middle of it and get a better exit down this long straight but you're going to be vulnerable as you take that slower line so Angus lining up Rick goes to the inside line Rick breaks as late as he can but he does have his nose on the inside and Angus gets on the power better and pulls out the car at a corner ahead of Rick so that's a nice clean lovely move down into the chicane there so Angus now, can he catch White Shark? Is he going to be the person that takes the battle to these guys? 
looks like now Russ oh no Angus Angus is off just ahead Angus is off in the TT let's have an instant re replay of that he's done all the hard work got up to third cuts a bit of grass there and oh he's all over the curb there and he just runs way too wide maybe just trying to be too aggressive all that hard work undone Angus Oh, and it looks like dirty tyres he runs wide although Big Wall just doesn't quite have the confidence to take advantage of that in the, this triple long right hander he almost went from third all the way down to sixth uh, Angus there in the TT right so things are starting to settle down a bit more we've had what 15 minutes of breakneck racing here uh, what we'll do We'll have a look through the field and I'll give you a rundown of uh, all the positions, how everybody's running. So first it's myself in the Ferrari 458. Uh, second up we have White Shark in the Lamborghini Huracan, about six seconds maybe behind. Third we have Rick in the F-Type. Fourth we have Rusty just behind in the Corvette. Fifth we have uh, Angus in the Hooters TT trying to make up for that mistakes. Sixth, Big Wall in the Cayman GT4. Fifth, uh, Moly in uh, the McLaren MC12. Eighth, uh, Busby Boy in the Lamborghini. Uh, ninth, Ace McLeod in the Hooters um, Evo 10. And tenth, Brother Nubsy. It looks like he's catching up to the Evo there with Gold 45 bringing up the rear. So let's br uh, break to some of the action uh, through the field. Here we've got uh, Rick in fourth, trying to apply pressure on, uh, sorry, Rusty in fourth, trying to apply pressure to Rick in the F-type just ahead. Now it looks like White Shark's made good his, his, his escape. He's started to hunt me down. Um, I was starting to feel the pressure at this point um, because uh, yeah, White Shark had fastest lap and he was catching me little by little each lap and then every so often he'd have a poor lap and then I'd pull out a bit more gap. So uh, I'm starting to feel the pressure at this point um, and just trying to keep my head down and pull away where I could. What we'll do, we're just looking through the field just to see where the battles are. It looks like we've got a close one here. We've got Brother, Brother, Brother Numpsy and uh, the uh, Ace McLeod Hooters uh, Evo 10. Um, Brother Nubsy was way back at one point, but it looks like he's just got his head down, uh, got some good consistent laps, and he's now starting to catch Ace McLeod just ahead. Uh, love the Rizzler t uh, uh, livery here. It's an, uh, got the nice matte paint with the semi-gloss uh, decals. I really like it on the, uh, the uh, Dodge Viper here. So just having another look through the field, it looks like Rusty had a look at Rick into the hairpin there, but just didn't get a very good exit and just dropped back a little bit, a bit here. Needs to maybe find where he's quicker than Rick and then just make the decisive move really. Rick runs a little bit wide there and actually now has to go defensive into this triple right-hander. Can he get the undercut? No, because so many apexes to this corner. It's actually probably a quadruple more like a uh, right hand corner. But uh, Rusty now not sticking in the slip stream, in, interestingly enough. Saying to Rick, I am going to look down the inside. I'm not going to take the slip stream. But doesn't break quite as late. Now we know Rick likes to take a wider line. Rusty likes to take a tighter line. But it looks like they mimic each other's lines there. Rick now has a slip stream. No challenges from behind, so he's got the opportunity to try and focus on ahead and not have to worry what might happen behind. Going around in turn one, the slip stream just starting to get really into effect there. Rusty, slightly tighter line there. Can he get him into going into the chicane here? Doesn't look like he's quite close enough to commit quite right there. Different lines again there, Rick, say compromising that apex for this apex. Although Rusty does bounce over the curbs there, I don't know if he's going to get himself a penalty because um, it looked like he took a quite a good chunk of curb there. Oh, it looks like um, Ace Cloud has managed to shake the Dodge Viper. Let's have an instant replay. Let's see what happened to the brother here. Catching up in the... Ah, it runs wide. Same place that um, Angus spun there. Um, that's a shame because I was looking like it was going to be a good battle between himself and the, uh, Evo and there you go it looks like 
Uh, Rusty did get a penalty and was actually serving it on the uh, back straight there, but it does mean Angus is now back up to fourth position. Big Wall down in sixth position, a bit in no man's land. We'll do a quick rundown again. So it's myself in first, uh, White Shark in second. He's now restarting the catch. Uh, Rick in the F type in third. Uh, Angus now in fourth in the TT. Fifth is Rusty in the Corvette. Sixth is Big Wall in the Cayman. Uh, seventh is Moly in the McLaren. Eighth, we have uh, Busby Boy in the uh, Lamborghini. And right behind him, actually, now Ace McLeod in the Mitsubishi catching up there. Brother, after that mistake, down in 10th. And 11th, we have Gold 45 in the Lexus. Love the paint job on that uh, Lexus, I have to say. So let's get in on the action with Ace McLeod looking at Busby Boy. Can he sneak himself down the inside of this Lamborghini? We know this Lamborghini is fast and very good on the brakes. Takes a slightly defensive line there. Four wheel drive both of these cars. Down into the final double hairpin. Looks like Ace McLeod's on the power slightly quicker, slightly earlier, and doesn't have to uh, turn as tight. It looks like he's got the better exit and he's alongside Busby Boy. He's got the inside for turn one. Who's going to break later? It looks like Ace McLeod slightly. Is Busby Boy going to go all the way around the outside? Is he going to do it? He has stayed all the way around the outside. Right now he's up to Ace McLeod down into the chicane. Oh, Busby Boy cuts him off a little bit naughty there. Really, it would have been nicer to see a little bit more space left on the apex there. Uh, because you knew he was there. He isn't going to disappear. You've got to give at least cars uh, width there. But Ace McLeod, can he come back looking at the back of uh, Busby? going down the inside he's definitely lining himself up there they both break as late as they can Ace McLeod on the inside again Busby Busby boy cuts him off there uh, maybe you just need to leave a little bit more space what we're going to do re join the action on board with my car this is where the pressure really starts to get to me uh, I've got three second gap and a mistake like that at the chicane um, lost a lot of time there uh, I, it's nearly a four second gap and we're down to 2.7 uh, maybe just trying too hard, got a kick of oversteer and once you hit that kerb it really unsettles the car. I come down to the hairpin there and uh, normally I change that to first but for whatever reason didn't, stayed in second and it just caused a lot of understeer in the car um, which was a shame. Uh, we're now coming through uh, the fast chicane at the top of the track and I kind of get my composure back at this point. Uh, previous lap was my fastest lap of the race, so um, race so far at least, and I was definitely trying. Um, I can see that uh, White Shark has done a 136.6, and my best time then was a 136.8. So I know he's taking time out of me each lap, or has the possibility to do it. So I was trying as hard as possible at this point in the race. Through the double hairpin, trying to get on the power nice and early not running too wide um, yeah uh, you can see now the gap is down to 1.6 seconds so I'm hammering, hemorrhaging time all, all every lap um, what's going through my mind now is I, I know he's going to catch me I've got eight minutes left of the race but I think I've got just enough pace to maybe hold him off but we come down into this uh, chicane here and this is where I made a mistake last time again try too hard slow it down and you can see I'm just a bit too much over that red kerb and that pretty much sums up my race yeah yeah as we come out of here you can see we end up with a two second penalty um, that's pretty much ruined um, my fight for first place there unfortunately um, I've got to serve the two second penalty a uh, new rule for this round and going forward is we have to serve the penalties on the start finish straight um, so my goal was just to try and get around to start finish straight as quick as possible serve the penalty as quick as possible and maybe cut back into the slipstream of white shark if i can stay in his slipstream then maybe i can force him into a mistake you can see there running wide again uh, i've now lost my lead down to one second um, so maybe if I got this penalty and still had a four second lead, uh, I wouldn't be stressing so much. But unfortunately, make the mistake when I've got a small 
lead and, and yeah I, I cracked under the pressure um, nothing more than I could say if I had stayed a bit calmer maybe didn't get into my own head as much then uh, I would still be ahead of White Shark at this point as you can see backing off to serve the penalty trying to serve it as quick as possible well try not to lose as uh, little time as possible uh, we'll catch a replay this is the view from White Shark coming out of the final corner I think you can see that I've got a penalty thought of going to take the slipstream but there's no point really because uh, yeah he's got the got the lead here so you can see a nice healthy gap to White Shark ahead so I'm nowhere near his slipstream so let's catch up the action with uh, Ace McLeod and Busby Boy so down the start finish straight, the Evo 10 in the, firmly in the slip stream of the, uh, the Lamborghini. It looks like Busby running a little bit wide there. Can Ace McLeod go down the inside? Torpedo straight down the inside. That's a good move. He's got the inside for the second part of the chicane, but he's going to have the tighter angle for the final part of the chicane. But it looks like that four-wheel drive system and the Evo's got him out of the corner nice and sharply. Right, Busby, can he get the slip stream and come back at him? down into the hairpin. Is he going to go for a late dive? Looks to the inside. They both break really late, but it looks like Ace McLeod has braked way too late. <laughs> and he actually goes off the track there. Comes back on the track, but it looks like he's managed just about to hold it on with a very, very wide line there. So cracking driving here. I have to say, today's race, there has been some um, great driving. Very fair, very respectful. As Ace McLeod goes a little bit wide, it's now under pressure. Can he hold the inside? Just about holds the inside. Busby can't turn in there because there's an Evo 10 with the Hooters logo placid across its bumper, stuck there on the apex. Although he gets a better exit down here, but he's going to be on the outside for the double hairpin. So, down to the final corner, we've got Busby in the Lamborghini and Ace McLeod. It looks like Busby's actually man. Although Ace McLeod comes back down the inside. Late move down the inside. He's got a very tight line there. Busby takes a uh, wider line there as Ace McLeod actually goes off the track and gets in the dust and dirt on the exit and is going to ruin his uh, exit speed all the way down this start finish straight there. And you can see it looks like Busby's boys managed to complete that move. What we're going to do now is catch the action up with myself on my fastest lap and I'll talk you through what's happening here. So down the start finish straight up to 6th and then we're going to have a dab of the brakes down one gear and try and get as close to the kerb as possible on the power nice and early and then we're going to be braking two gears once we get al alongside the kerb there. Meet the kerb on the inside here, brake down one more gear and try and get the car um, as close as, if you can't get the red sausage kerb to go down the middle of the car, try and get as close as possible to it without touching it because if you touch it it will launch the front of the car. So up one ton, tenth, tenth on the best so far. Coming down to this corner, brake as soon as we get alongside the kerb again there. All the way down to first, a little bit too late, losing the rear end a little bit. But uh, got racing super soft, so got plenty of grip. Up through the gar gears, completely flat out through this left hand corner. And then this right hand corner, we're going to have a dab of the brakes, no downshift though. Hold it in fourth, and now we have a dab of the brake and downshift. On the power, really early there, you can see we're almost on the power before the apex up over the hill and as soon as we see that dark area on the left hand side brake and then down two gears once we get to a point where we think the front end's going to bite get on the power fully and then power all the way through this flat out right hand corner so you can see at this point i was trying to put in the best lap times i can to hold on to white shark maybe try and force him into an error so once we get alongside the curve there again brake all the way down to second from sixth Try and come all the way out to the line to make this corner as open as possible. You can see we're on the power in seven, second gear very early through that corner there. Up through the gears, fifth and then on to sixth and that was a 136.7 so not too bad. Only a tenth off fastest lap of the race so far. Now we'll catch up the action back further in the field. We can see here Rick is in third with Angus in the TT in fourth. Looking up to the inside, coming down into the hairpin. So 
uh, first and second is myself and White Shark further down the road, but this is uh, the, the fight for the final part, spot on the podium. Angus breaks late, but Rick breaks later, but Angus does have the inside line and manages to complete that pass. And Angus in the TT back up to third. Remember, he was up to third and then threw it all away before. So standards is White Shark first, myself second, Angus third in the TT, and then you got fourth, Rick. In, uh, fifth, Rusty. All three drivers there are covered by a matter of a second or two. Big Wall sixth in the Cayman GT4. Seventh, Moly in the McLaren. And it looks like he's got a nice gap. And then we've got Ace McLeod and uh, Busby Boy uh, battling for uh, eighth and ninth. There it looks like we've got the opposite of what we had before. But again, Ace McLeod manages to get the better exit and stays ahead of Busby Boy. And then 10th we have, I believe, are we going to stick with this battle? It looks like we are because it looks like uh, Ace McLeod has made a mistake and Busby Boy's ma managed to find himself back up through and past the Evo 10. 10th, sorry, we have Brother in the Rizzler Dodge Viper and I believe at, uh, 11th was Gold 45 but he had to leave so technical disc uh, difficulties for Gold 45 in the first race. So, we catch up for this massive battle. This is the battle at the moment on track. So it's for the final point on the uh, place on the podium even. Um, up ahead, White Shark is just slowly pulling away from myself. Um, my head had gone and I kept on making silly mistakes. So, we have Angus in the TT in third, Rick fourth in the F-Type, and fifth we have Rusty in the Corvette. So we can see the Corvette's quite good on the straights initially, but uh, it seems the F-Type's got the top end. Uh, although Rick is a little bit wide through Turn 1. Can Rusty take advantage? It looks like he's just starting to get alongside. Who's going to break later into chicane? It looks like Rick's slightly later on the brakes, manages to fend off Rusty and hold on to his fourth position. Rusty now getting a nice good exit there in the kerbs uh, pretty nicely, although he doesn't quite have enough speed to take on the F-Type quite yet. Don't think there's enough of a uh, close enough gap to uh, attack down into the hairpin. Although it looks like Rick may be going for Angus into the hairpin there and he actually ends up going way way late and uh, Rusty manages to get the cut back. Now it's a drag, a drag race up the hill through this fast left hand corner and Rusty manages to complete the pass. So it looks like Rick was either breaking too late to defend from Rusty or went May on a half-hearted attack of uh, Angus ahead in the TT, but just end up running way too wide into to that um, hairpin at the start, at the, start of the, uh, the the lap. So now we have Rick in fifth, looking ahead at the guys um, guys just in front. Can Rusty now take on Angus? Can he get two moves done in one lap? Looks like Angus is later on the brakes, but he runs way too wide, way too wide there, and he's actually got on the black stuff, and then again goes from third all the way down to fifth this time. That compromises uh, Rusty on the exit, and now we've got Rick coming back past uh, Rusty down the start-finish line. That, that F-type is definitely faster than a straight line at the end of the straight line, so top end. Uh, maybe a car to look out for, for Lesarth, which I believe is next week. Rusty now though comes on and the cut back on the inside but Rick is still there now the chicane is going to start getting tighter and Rusty's managed to go all the way around the outside hits the curb with quite a thud there so he may have compromised himself down this uh, back straight and it looks like Rick is now coming alongside but he's on the outside for the hairpin who's going to break latest it looks like Rick just a little bit later but he's got the outside line there and Rusty manages to cover him off so no bueno there unfortunately for you Rick my friend right so it's coming up to the I believe this is a, either the, the last lap or the second to last lap so Rusty now occupying that third place and last spot on the uh, podium and is thoroughly trying to hold up Rick and Angus here breaking through this triple right hand corner we can hear, oh, Rusty running, running wide there, actually gets out onto the red stuff and he goes from third all the way down to fifth. This is just drama all the way. Now Angus, who was third, who was, uh, and one then was fifth, is now fourth, looking at third, goes to the inside, 
breaks late. Got the inside on Rick. It looks like he may be uh, having a slight penalty because he's ghosting. This is the final lap. He comes out, but he does have a penalty to serve. So he loses third to Rick. Gets back on the power. He served the penalty. But can he beat Rusty to the line? Yes, he can. So, uh, White Shark takes the win. Followed by myself. Followed by Rick, Angus, Rusty, Big Wall. We've got Molly here in the McLaren and then Budsy Boy in the Lamborghini followed by, uh, I believe, Ace McLeod, yes, in the Evo 10, uh, Brother Nubsy in the Viper and Gold 45 unfortunately having technical issues with his Lexus. So overall, uh, started third, finished second, had the pace to finish first, but my own mistakes cost me first so I could be happy with the result a bit hard on myself because it's my fault it wasn't better but if you enjoyed this video um, let me know in the comments below let me know what you like to see and I'll see you again soon